Hello, welcome to another Flutter Flow tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the different database types that you can use in your Flutter Flow project. Flutter Flow, of course, is a very cool tool that you can use to build both, you know, simple and enterprise projects. But one thing that you must take into cognizance is the kind of database that you use. Uh, Flutter Flow recently launched the standard art. Yeah, it's a feature that allows you to authenticate users using external services. So you don't have to rely on Flutterflow provided services. Because you don't have to rely on Flutterflow, you can use third party authentication services to authenticate your users. That means to log in and sign up your users or, you know, help them access certain pages in your application. So one of the, when, when you think of Flutterflow, the, the, the database that you'd want to use is Firebase. Firebase is a cool tool. It comes integrated directly with Flutterflow. So this is the database that comes directly with Flutterflow. And so a lot of persons will recommend Firebase. But the thing is, Firebase is a no SQL database. So if you're coming from an SQL background, Firebase might not be the best choice for you, right? But it's so powerful because it comes with all the tools that it, that Google provides. Google has a whole lot of tools because it's a very big company. It has a whole lot of services. It comes with extensions, right? It comes with plug and play extensions that you can use, you know. So that means if you're using Firebase, automatically you're able to access almost all the tools that Google has. So that's something to take into cognizance before moving to other database type, right? Then we also have Superbase. Superbase it, uh, is a cool tool, is an alternative to Firebase because, I don't know, indie hackers just like it. People just like using uh, Superbase, maybe because it is tiny and maybe because it's a direct competitor with um, with Firebase because Firebase is a big product. And also I think uh, people like using Superbase because it's, a, it's an SQL kind of database. So if you're coming from a table background, from an SQL background, you can easily integrate with Firebase and it's super cool. So both developers and non-developers get to use Superbase. Flutterflow integrate really well, really, really well with uh, Superbase. So you can do most of your queries, you can retrieve all your data directly in uh, um, in Flutterflow. So with Firebase and Superbase, you can actually integrate, you know, you can do almost anything right there. But also another database type that you want to look at is Airtable. So I know Airtable, it's a, it's a very smart spreadsheet, right? It's a smart spreadsheet, but you can use Airtable in your application right you can use Airtable as your database uh to store all your records especially if you're into if you're trying to maybe probably open an online store or you're trying to um, showcase data that you already have in a spreadsheet so you can use Airtable to do this right if you if you're doing anything that is just database centric maybe a feed management application a store management management application a business management application these are things that Airtable can do very well a CRM so let's say you want to translate those CRM into mobile application in um, Flutterflow or probably there are parts of that CRM that you want to use in a different project then you can always use um, Firebase as your backend. But meanwhile, you would have to use other services as your authentication provider. You can use Firebase, you can use Superbase, you can use other services that we're going to relate with as your authentication provider, right? Then also we have BuildChip. BuildChip is a very cool tool that allows you to create APIs on the go, but they have a database service, right? I haven't used the database service so much, but it's something that you can try because BuildChip integrates very well with Flutterflow, comes with a whole lot of templates that you can use to build your projects, especially if you're looking forward to building anything that is AI related, right? If you're building anything that is ChatGPT4, Gemini 5, um, that is AI related, then BuildChip is going to come through for you, right? Then we have other tables that you can use. You can also use um, Xano. You can use Xano. Xano is a no-code first database that can scale, right? But if you're going to be using that Xano, you would have to think of the cost first, right? It's very important that you think of the cost. If you compare Xano and Superbase costs, right? you would see the difference. Like the difference is really clear. It's just 25 and Firebase, we just, it's free. On Firebase, it's pretty free until you hit your quota, right? Cost is something to think about. If you're a maker who doesn't have so much money to spare, 
but Xano might not be the right choice. Xano works very similar to Airtable. You create your database here in Xano. It provides API that you can call, and then you load all your data to that API endpoint. It lands in your database, and you can, you know, you can perform crude. You can create, read, update, delete, and you can do so much more custom functions and so much more with your Xano database. So there are other ones that I would like to point out. I like to point out Notion. Notion can also be a very, very um, good database for you. And also you can even build products on top of Notion with the Notion database because Notion has a very huge ecosystem that you can tap into. If you're doing anything that has to do with productivity, you can promise your users that you they will be able to store their tables in their Notion database. So Bluetooth itself has a Notion uh has a notion endpoint you know it has a notion endpoint you can see access token create comment create page fetch page list users query database so you build ship has a notion endpoint that you can use so users who have to authenticate their notion their notion database with you with yours right with yours you have to authenticate it and then you can communicate with that particular database so if you are building anything that has to do with productivity i would suggest that you use notion as your default database with this you wouldn't have to pay for database because your users will be paying for the database services because you don't really have to pay all you have to do is to authenticate with it and use it right there are other uh there are other databases that you can use this is nhost this is the end host, but uh, I I wouldn't I can't vouch for this, right? I can't vouch for this because it's majorly for developers, so I really don't use it too much. But you can also use these directors. Directors is a very very cool tool that you can use because uh, it gives you the choice, right, of having all your admin here, so you don't have to build two partner. Imagine that point where you want to where you want to create a backend, right? You want to create a backend or you want to create an application, you have to build the front end and then you have to build the backend. But with direct us, you can, all your admin can be here, why then you use endpoints, you know, API endpoints to communicate with your admin, right? This would really be cool if you're going to be using, um, if you're going to be creating anything that has to do with management, store management, home management, anything that has to do with management, this is going to be really cool, right? So go try out this database. I want you to leave me a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this database. Tell me your choices. If you have questions or you have questions or you have topics that you need me to, to cover with regards to all of these database, feel free to reach out to me and I'll definitely uh, answer your questions. Thank you very much for watching. Do remember to subscribe. And if you want to be part of a no code community where I share, uh, I share videos, I share templates, I hear a whole lot more, click on the link below. I'm going to drop it there. You can, you know, click on the link below. It's going to take you to the page. All you have to do, enter your email address and you'll be part of that community. We're good. We're growing. It's pretty large. I think we're about 4,500 now. If you join now, it's going to be 4,500 plus one. I'll see you in a different lesson entirely. Thank you very much for watching.